Hey everybody and welcome back to the third video on this 3D printers build log. In the last video I built the frame out of aluminum extrusions, but unfortunately right now it still consists out of two parts. So in this video I'll be attaching both parts using drawer slides. Here I have two of the drawer rails in front of me and they are still moving pretty nicely but I found that some of them don't move as nicely as I wanted them to. So um, this one for example is pretty rough. It's a bit too rough for my liking. Uh, maybe I can just sort it out since uh, I've bought a couple more. But if it turns out that more of them go as rough as this one, I may have to do some mod modifications. I have two rails in front of me because I would like to connect them together like this or like this or in any way so that I ha would have the extended range of motion. So if I slide this one out all the way and this one, I want to connect them like this. So I would have an extended range of motion but they would still collapse like this and be a very small package. I've already tried many different ways to connect them together with screws. I've, I have an assortment of many different screws right here and I've tried them all and none of them works. So the problem is that, let's see if I can get this on camera, the inner part, so there's an inner part right here and that part just collide, collides with every single screw I put in there. Um, I found out that I, I will be able to use these screws, these small ones, on the outer side of the wall. So I'll be able to, for example, put it through this hole and it won't collide with the slide inside here. So if I close it, you can see the slide passing over it without any problem. These screws are also small enough so that they can fit inside of the profile of this aluminum extrusion. So if you use a nut like this one, you'll be able to just take it and slide it into the profile like uh, so. And then take the slide, put the screw in and screw them together. Now to connecting the two slides together. I've already said before that these sides won't screw together. The holes are too big and the slides inside collide with the heads of the screws. So no matter what screw you use, if I use for example this screw, it would fit pretty loosely, which wouldn't be ideal because the holes are too big. And on top of that, it would just collide inside with the slide itself. So what I've came up with is actually soldering them together. I know this is not the nicest way to do it. In fact, it's not nice at all. I would rather just screw them together, but there's actually just no way I, can, I will be able to screw them together. So I went to soldering and I tried it out right here. I put a bit of solder right here and a bit of solder on the end and also a bit of solder on this side. Oh no, no solder on this side. So only on this side and on the end. And this is already very sturdy. I really like this. So although soldering actually isn't the way I would like to go, I think um, now that I see it, it's actually a pretty good option. Now how I did it is a bit different on how you usually solder because these rails tend to work as a giant heatsink. So if I use, for example, a normal sol soldering iron, and this one is actually pretty beefy, I would still not be able to heat it enough so that the solder would stick. To get it to work anyways, you'll have to use one of these. So these output enough heat so the aluminum gets hot enough and the solder actually sticks to them. Let me show you on this fresh unsoldered pair. 
So what I would do is just lay them on top of each other. Um, I would also use clamps for this, just to clamp it together and get, to get it together really well. Uh, I won't do it right here because these are just the spare rails that I uh, don't need. But what you do is you heat it up on one side. Nope. Okay, here I have it from a different angle. So I heat it up. Once it's hot enough, you can add the solder. So you add the solder and now you can see that it still builds up like a little blob. And you can get the blob to get away by just heating it up a bit more until it wicks into the actual solder joint. And that's it, pretty easy. Now one thing you want to watch out for is that this is a giant heatsink. So if you heat up this side, even this side in the end will get pretty hot. So you have to watch out that the rail inside, which is made out of plastic, is quite a bit away from the point where you're soldering. So you, so you have to solder one side and then you have to wait for it to cool down and then you move the slide over to this side so you can solder the other side. Here you see a little time lapse of me soldering. The process is very tedious because it still takes a long time for the rail to heat up, but eventually I finished soldering all of them together. I also had to prop the rails up with another rail because I was scorching unnecessary burn marks all over my table. I really like this clip because you can see how nicely the bead of solder gets wicked into the joint once you heat it up enough. And this is just one of the many times where I had to refill my torch again. So I think it's safe to say that it does use quite a bit of cutane. I wish I could say that all the finished rails looked as nice as this one. Especially the first ones looked pretty bad, but after some trial and error, I quickly got the hang of it. Here I'm zoomed in into one of the corners of the 3D printer and I would like to attach this double slide, which I sold it before into both of these corners. So right here and another one right there. But to get the full range of motion, I'll have to cut this part of the housing off so that the upper part of the housing will fit snugly to this extrusion and this lower part won't interfere with the bottom of the 3D printer. You could use a metal saw to make the cut, but I have a Dremel, so I couldn't be bothered using the metal saw. I will just use the Dremel. It would be much faster and much less work. Once all the rails were cut to length, I proceeded by boring the holes. Here you see me boring a pilot hole with a small bit first before boring the hole to the right size. Once all holes were done, I turned the rails around to clean up the holes from the back side. Since that side had to be flushed with the extrusion, it'll be mounted on. Since I had cut off the part of the rail that prevents the carriage from sliding off, I put a small bead of solder on the rolling surface inside of the rails. That way I didn't have the risk of losing all the ball bearings in case I accidentally let the carriage roll out. After cleaning everything thoroughly with soap to get the grinding dust and metal shavings off, I had to re-lubricate the rails again. And I just used some fork oil that I had left from the fork repair of my motorbike and applied it with some Q-tips. And even after all the cleaning, I still got a lot of fine dust off the rails, which I would have definitely overseen if I hadn't applied the oil that way.
I've just finished attaching the rails to the printer and I was a bit scared that I maybe over constrained the frame or the structure itself because I just attached too many rails um, in total and in fact it was pretty difficult to move the or it is pretty difficult to move the upper part from the printer up and down by hand so I just wanted to try out whether it's possible to move it with the several motors or whether they would bind up or you know what's happening at all so I've just printed some small brackets to constrain the lead screws and I've just attached the stepper motors to my other printer and I've opened Repetier host right here so let's see when I connect manual control okay oh I forgot that I have to home my printer first so let's home So that was a bit <laughs> so that was a bit rough, but I think it's not that big of a deal because I didn't constrain the motors themselves, so I can still move the motors right now. And let's see. So yeah, I can still move the motors. So if I hold the motors down by hand, it's actually not even that bad. So let me move this up again. Yeah. I would say that's perfectly sufficient. Well that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and if you haven't seen my previous videos on this 3D printer then you can click right here to go to the entire playlist and other than that, uh, see you next time!